Thank you to my newest patron, David Combs. I appreciate your generosity, and as always, you can reach me with any questions or concerns via Patreon PM, Minds.com, or Twitter at a helping hand for me. Every dollar helps, every dollar is appreciated, and every pledge of $10 or more will earn you a permanent spot in my video credits. At last, Father's Day has arrived, and I now get the chance to speak on the feminist harpies attempting to invade it. I wanted to do this last year, but unfortunately, due to certain events in my personal life, it sort of passed me by. But this year, I waited for feminism to deliver once again, and they did not disappoint. Frankly, this was the exact thing that made me turn on feminism years ago. This was the final nail in the coffin, and has served as a damning reminder that feminism truly is a man-hating cult every year since. And of course, who better than ATTN to deliver that reminder for the year of 2018? Hello, world. Just look at this. Pop culture references to fatherhood violence, stupidity, and general buffoonery set to the insulting tune of a tuba denoting clumsiness and general worthlessness. They haven't spoken a single word yet, and we already have a clear vision of how these jackasses are going to present the argument against Father's Day. They have already made it perfectly clear that they don't understand what it means to be a father, let alone in the current year. Listen up, dads. It's time to cancel Father's Day. Forever. I'm sorry, but you guys just don't do enough to deserve a day all to yourself. I mean, first of all, you're not really parents. You're more like babysitters. Oh, look who got put on babysitter duty today. I'm not the babysitter. I'm the dad. Babysitters. Of course. That is precisely how feminists of every generation have perceived fatherhood going all the way back to the Tender Years Doctrine of 1873. Simply because being a father does not involve the trauma of pushing out a baby between his legs, feminists have convinced themselves that fatherhood is nothing more than a man ejaculating into a vagina and going on about his business. As if the males of our species aren't socially predisposed to patterns of monogamy even though it's only ever been women and children who tangibly benefit from such a union. As if fatherhood doesn't traditionally entail a man working himself to the bone to support the mother throughout her pregnancy and the child for a minimum of 18 years whether they're granted the right to be a part of that child's life or not. And by the way, I just love the dad that you're using here. A pathetic simp without a shred of masculinity who doesn't have the balls to stand up for himself. And why would we take a day to celebrate fathers when men aren't really emotionally capable of caring for children? It's okay, little baby. Where do you think that mass perception of fatherhood comes from, Christina? From that baby's first breath, your loving voice will be the first he hears. From the first moment he opens his eyes, yours will be the first loving face he sees. Through the vast majority of his infant cries, your maternal pangs will ensure that yours will be the embrace to soothe him. And in a social dynamic that predates our advent as a species, fathers will generally concede monopolization of that child's attention as a courtesy to what has been perceived as your special, unimpeachable bond. Because of this, feminists believe that men simply have no emotional investment with their child. That they just don't care enough to ensure a baby's safety and well-being. That they've somehow passed this burden onto mothers out of laziness and an inferior capacity for intimacy when the reality is that, throughout our history, mothers have insisted on spearheading that caregiver role to the point of putting themselves between the baby and anyone else, including the father, when that baby is in distress. And because of that, from that child's first spoken word, he is almost guaranteed to ask for his mother when he's in need of comfort, regardless of how much his father cares and wants to help. An emotional pain that no mother, no woman, will ever experience. And look, even if our society did believe that men were capable of raising kids, I can confidently speak for every woman when I say that we don't want help folding 27 loads of laundry, wiping butts, making school lunches for picky eaters, pulling raisins out of our kids' nostrils, or any of the other millions of tasks that come with being a parent. Hey, honey, let me help. Oh, I got it. It's fine. Why don't you uh, go watch the game? But I hate sports. This is precisely the problem, Christina. You're gauging a father's worthiness as a parent based on the responsibilities traditionally associated with motherhood, thereby demonstrating further that you don't understand what it is to be a father. I guess working yourself to death in order to feed, clothe, and shelter your children doesn't count in the raising of a child these days. I guess sacrificing time with your children in order to toil away at that job, subsequently sacrificing their love and fond memories of you for the sake of their welfare, doesn't make a father a worthy parent. 
Let me be clear, parenting is a one woman job. It's the reason we're constantly pointing out everything you're doing wrong, aka differently than us. Yeah, and funny how nobody is badgering you over the correct way to fix an engine, power rake a lawn, fix a roof, install insulation, build a deck, pave a driveway, or fix the plumbing. Not a single word. As a matter of fact, society still doesn't expect you to do any of these things, much less in the correct way. Funny how he is the only one still expected to meet all of his gender roles in addition to relieving you of yours with a performance that's to your nagging satisfaction. And before you chime in with, but men can be great parents too, blah blah blah, let me just stop you right there. Have you ever even watched television? Oh, honey, I actually gave the kids dog food for dinner. Honey, come here, look, it's you. But honey, everybody loves my ginger glazed copper ranch salmon with broccolini florets and whipped parsnip reduction. Men. Yeah, you'll just laugh it up as men are made to look like incompetent fools in your favorite sitcoms, splitting at the sides at our society's collective reduction of fatherhood to a punchline. And yet, you'll still bitch and complain about any stereotype, negative portrayal, and or objectification of women on screen, won't you? In fact, you go out of your way to shoehorn women into masculine roles every chance you get just to make a gendered anything-you-can-do-I-can-do-better statement, and then completely fail to encourage women to get into garbage collection, road construction, or mining. Because you don't actually want to help, you just want people to think that you do. Isn't it interesting how the world keeps on churning even though men as a gender have received nothing but demasculation, insults, and shame since the 60s? Isn't it fascinating how our infrastructure remains standing despite men's complete lack of acknowledgement for their contributions as a demographic, even though the overwhelming majority of the backbreaking labor involved is fulfilled by men? It's a good thing that men, by and large, don't require the constant uplifting emotional validation that feminists believe women can't go without. Otherwise, we probably would have gone extinct long before we ever laid the first brick in making the world what it is today. Now, I can already hear you responding with facts. Like the fact that multiple studies show that children with active and engaged dads do better in school. Or the fact that when fathers get involved in their kids' lives, boys are more well-behaved and girls are less likely to develop psychological problems during their teen years. Or the fact that when parents show love and respect for each other, they serve as positive role models for how their sons should act as future fathers and help daughters learn what to expect from their partners. And to all of that, I say, who are you going to believe? Years of vetted and peer research data? Or everybody loves Raymond? Huh? That's what I thought. Share this video if you think it's time to cancel Father's Day. Or time to show way more respect to dads. What a twist. That's right, you guys. ATTN is actually lecturing feminists in this video. And they're going about it in the dumbest way possible treating the very real feminist effort to devalue fatherhood as a joke. As if any of the feminists watching it are going to detect their sarcasm when it's coming from an outlet that has only ever agreed with their every absurd talking point up until now. Hell, I didn't even understand that this was their angle. Not until they decided to dump cold statistics in our laps as if they are the reason we celebrate fatherhood. Well, in that case, let me help you out there, Christina. I'm going to show you the correct way to shine light on the stupidity of this argument. And it's going to involve explaining things that you clearly don't understand. First and foremost, you can stop judging a father's worthiness based on his capacity to relieve you of your burdens. You may be of the mind to show way more respect to dads, but you still seem to think that a father is nothing more than an assistant mother. Someone to take over folding towels so you can rock the baby to sleep. As much as we hear so many women complain about the things you list in this video, as much as feminists love to shame men into sharing this load, nobody ever acknowledges the fact that fathers have always shouldered burdens exclusive to their gender as well. Burdens that women have yet to share by way of necessity rather than empowering personal choice, and for which women at large have never sympathized with men. Setting aside the fact that you put no expectation on a girl's behavior when you can only think that the presence of a father benefits them insofar as what to expect from their partners, which is a disgusting mindset and a video for another day, you allude to a father's necessity in raising boys to be good future fathers. And yet, you say nothing about their necessity in raising boys to be men, because you fail to acknowledge that boys are not treated like girls and men are not treated like women. There's a reason why men are perceived as unemotional, Christina. The same reason why boys have been raised to be boys and not simply as girls who haven't yet figured out how to be girls. 
To be a father is to put your child at the core of the relationship, and to be the rocky, indestructible outer layer that protects both the core and the soft, warm inner layer called mom that envelops and nurtures that core, the layer that stands between dad and baby. Like it or not, and regardless of the women in the workplace of today, that was the job of a father for countless generations, and it remains so in a large capacity, because even though you are empowered to seek a career, no part of our mating dynamic demands you to have a job. Fatherhood meant never crying, never admitting defeat, and never showing vulnerability or weakness, because at least one parent in that household had to be strong enough that his children would never believe that he couldn't keep the dangers of the world from harming them. He had to show no fear so that they would always believe that everything would be okay, no matter how bad things got, and could grow up with healthy, untraumatized minds. Not only does a father surrender the role of the loving caregiver to mom, he also assumes the role of the bad guy when he has to lay down the law and say no, even when his own child would hate him for it, especially when mom decides to go over his head and say yes. Fatherhood means struggling through the pain of wanting to provide everything for his children that he never had growing up in order to prioritize feeding them, educating them, and putting a roof over their heads. Ladies, and especially feminists, get this through your fucking heads. The reason Mother's Day is more spiritedly celebrated, celebrated on a moral imperative not afforded to Father's Day, is because your love was always readily apparent. Because you were the one your child could run to in tears every time they got a boo-boo on the playground. The one who checked for fevers with a loving touch and spoon-fed them chicken soup when they were sick. But that isn't the role that befalls a father. A father's love is a love of necessary denial. A love that a son seeks in the form of acknowledgement. And if he was a good father, only once that son has grown hair on his chest will he finally understand that it was never the hair that made him a man, but learning the lessons his father taught him every step of the way. And that, Christina, is how a father raises a son to be a good father. A father does not coddle his son, because throughout most of our history, that was not his job. Where his mother coddled him and made him into a caring person, it was his father's job to make him strong to harden him in preparation for a world that would not show him mercy or hand him anything he has not earned. And that remains true to this day, ladies, because once again, you aren't the ones jumping through hoops for us and attempting to buy our affection. If we, as men, cannot fend for ourselves, we can expect to die and die lonely. My father and I didn't really start bonding until he first taught me to play chess around the age of 12 or 13. And no matter how frustrated I got, even when it brought me to tears, he never took it easy on me. He never let me win. Because while he knew it might make me feel better in the moment, it would make me feel much more satisfied when I knew for sure that I truly could beat him with my own strength. And I'm grateful for that. Because that very first time I actually beat him became the sweetest victory of my life the moment I could see in his eyes, in his smile, that I had become a competent player. His equal. I had earned his acknowledgement. And in the years following, we competed in statewide tournaments together and spent every Tuesday night together at our local club. To this day, he still discusses his games with me because he not only knows that I can see what he sees, but that I might see something he doesn't see. That is how a boy becomes a man in his father's eyes, Christina. Not by constant emotional validation and coddling, but by learning, growing, and stepping up to be someone his father would conceivably trust and rely on. As I spent Father's Day with my dad, a number of thoughts flooded my mind. I remember thinking of him as a grumpy person I couldn't talk to. I remember having screaming arguments with him when I was a teenager, some that nearly came to violence as I taunted him, to my everlasting regret, to hit me and become just like my grandfather who used to abuse him. I remembered the tears in his eyes when I said that to him, and I didn't yet understand how deeply it cut him. He knew in that moment that I didn't understand how much he'd sacrificed for me, and how hard he tried to be stern without hurting me the way his father hurt him. And back then, he was right. Not long ago, he helped me out in putting together the bed I'm currently sitting on as I write the script for this video. It took a great force of will just for him to get on his knees, because they're now so bad after so many years of hard labor, and I had to choke back tears when I saw the agony on his face. I recalled all of the hard jobs he took on throughout my life. Painting, drywall, roofing, and now, in his early 60s, he works as a trucker for a landscaping company. He didn't do those things out of passion for his craft, and I never cared to ask him if he ever had hopes or dreams for his future. He did those things for my brother and me. He broke himself so that we could grow up comfortably, and I never once thanked him for it. That is why we have a Father's Day, feminists. It's not to celebrate the statistical benefit that you believe can be satisfied by any given man in the household. 
Father's Day is for the men who went hungry so that their children could eat. Father's Day is for the men who died in wars to provide for their sons, their daughters, and their wives back home. Father's Day is for the men who buried their sons who died in those same wars. Father's Day is for my brother, who is struggling at the end of his rope just to provide for my two nieces. Father's Day is for my father, who worked so hard to give my brother and me every opportunity in this life, and who will continue to work hard into old age to provide what he can for his family. Father's Day is for any man who first looked with pride and joy into the eyes of his newborn son or daughter and loved them with all of his heart from the time they drew their first breath. A father is not a second mother, feminists, because a boy is not a girl and a man is not a woman. Men and fathers are not things that you can deconstruct, re-engineer, or replace. Nor are they something for which you get to weigh the pros and cons as if their existence has ever been your choice or permitted through your tolerance. Father's Day is the reason that I, and every other anti-feminist like me, will not stop until we expose feminism for the hateful, vindictive cancer that it is. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what you saw here, have a look at my other videos and leave me your thoughts in the comments. If you support my message, then please like, favorite, and subscribe. If you'd like to help this channel improve, you can reach out to me on Twitter or on Facebook with any suggestions. And if you'd like to support me more directly, please consider following me on Patreon. Links in the description. Thanks again, and I'll catch you all in my next video.